That's the five maths 2019 paper one question one. F of x is 5x cubed, f of minus 2. So substituting minus 2 in, we've got 5 times minus 2 cubed. Bid mask, remember, do the cubed bit first, then times by 5. So minus 2 cubed is 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8, so it's minus 8. So it's 5 times minus 8. 5 eighths is 40, so it's negative 40 as a final answer. Next we that's the final maths 19, paper 1, question 2, multiplying fractions, 3 eighths times 1 and 5 sevenths. So we've got 3 eighths <coughs> times 1 and 5 sevenths. 1 times 7 is 7, plus 5 is 12, so that's 12 over 7. Now at this point you could either simplify now or simplify when you're finished. I'm just going to simplify when I'm finished. So 3 times 12 is 36, and 8 times 7 is 56. So now we need to find a way to simplify that. Let's try and divide by 4. Although you could just divide by 2 then 2 again. So 4 and 9 is 36 and 4 into 56 goes 14 times. So we get 9 14 and we're done there. Yeah, past paper question 2019. This comes from paper 1 question 3. Quite often these questions will either come at the start of the paper, nice and easy to get you going, or maybe towards the end of the paper when you've had to write an expression yourself. But let's just deal with the simple cases. So we've got x add 5, 2x squared minus 7x take away 3. Hopefully you get an idea now. I draw my grid. On one side goes the first bracket. So I'll put x add 5 down the side. And the other side goes the other bracket. 2x squared minus 7x minus 3 times it all together. I've got x times 2x squared. It's 2x cubed. x times minus 7x minus 7x squared. x times minus 3 minus 3x. 5 times 2 is 10, so 10x squared. Put a plus in. 5 times 7 is 35, so minus 35x. 5 times 3 is 15, so minus 15. Putting it all together in the same way, we will have an answer of, are we ready? 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 38x minus 15. Basically, National 5 Maths 2019, paper 1, question 4, had this arc length question. It says, the radius is 30, the angle is 240, calculate the length of the major arc. Now, this was paper 1, so it's non-calculator, so I'm going to give you some hints for this one. You still start off in the same way, don't be worried. Arc length equals angle out of 360 times pi times diameter. Now we can just substitute in. Our angle is 240 out of 360 times by pi times by 60. Double 30 makes 60. So now at this point, you might be wondering, what can I do? Well, to calculate this with a non-calculator, always best to simplify any fractions first. So I'm going to just going to take it beside... 240 over 360. I can drop the zeros to straight away to, to get 24 over 36. And then I'm looking for two numbers at times to get to make 24. Uh, two numbers, a number that goes into 24 and 36. Well, 4 goes in, I know that straight away, so I'll divide by 4. 4 6s is 24, 4 9s is 36. Oh, I can see 3 goes in as well. And you could have got there quicker by dividing by 12. 3 2s is 6, and 3 3s is 9. So our sum now can be replaced with this fraction. I've got arc length is 2 thirds times pi times 60. I'll leave the pi to the end. So I've now got 2 thirds of 60. So I divide by 3 and times by 2. 3 twenties is 60. 20 times 2 is 40. So I've got 40 times pi. So that's 40 times 3.14. So we need to do this sum. So there's lots of ways to do it, but times them by 40 is the same as times them by 10 and times them by 4. So again, at the side, you can just do 3.14 times 4. 4 fours is 16, carry 1. 4 ones is 4, plus 1 is 5. 4 threes is 12. So you get 12.56. So that is 10 times 12.56 which is 125.6, and our units were centimetres. Now we're into quarter range question, this time at S. Gray National 5 Maths 2019, paper 1, question 5 says, the midday temperatures in Grantford were recorded over a 90 period, and they were here. 
calculate a median and same it into quadro gain. So this one we do have to calculate a median and then we'll have to make two comments about that which we'll get into when we get there. So remember median and same it into range, we need the data to be in order. So let's start with that. I've already put in the data in order for us and we need to find the middle of that. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine plus one is ten. The median happens at five. One, two, three, four, five. So there's my median right here. And I'll put the answer properly in a minute. Let's use a different colour pen. So the upper quartile is the middle of the upper half, which is this four numbers, so it's in the middle here. So I'll draw a little line. There's my upper quartile. Well, the middle of seven and nine, no work required there is eight. If you didn't need some work on that, you just do nine plus seven is 16 divided by two. The lower quartile then is the middle of three and four. Well, that's 3.5 again if you didn't know that 3 plus 4 is 7 divided by 2 is 3.5 so we can write that out in night nice and neatly upper quartile is equal to 8 lower quartile is equal to 3.5 my median was equal to 5 and the question asked us for the semi interquartile range now remember in National 5 from now on, you'll get asked for the interquartile range, but I'll do the same as well. So the interquartile range is just 8 take away 3.5, upper minus lower, 4.5. But to answer the questions for this paper, the semi interquartile range is just half of that. So 4.5 divided by 2, which is 2.25. Let's move on to the comparison statements, which work the same way for interquartal range or for semi-interquartal range. Over the same nine period, the midday temperatures in N-DOC were also recorded and the median was 8 and the same interquartal range was 1.5. Make two valid comments. So, this is a bit like when you did standard, uh, standard form. Median is the same as mean, basically, you're using on average. But for interquartal range, that's the same as standard form, you're using consistency there. So let's start off with median and then consistency. So let's take a note of the numbers we need. So I'll just take a note of this one and go down below. Part B, on average, our median in Grantford was five, but in NDOC is eight. On average, the temperature and NDOC are higher since 8 degrees C is bigger than 5 degrees C. The temperatures in NDOC are more consistent. since 1.5 is less than 2.25. So more consistent, smaller interquartile range, just like standard deviation. Line of best fit, SQA National 5 Maths 2019, paper one, question six, had this one. It says, the fuel consumption of a group of cars is recorded and the scatter graph shows the relationship between the fuel consumption, F on the y-axis, kilometers per litre, and the engine size, E in litres of the cars, the line of best fit is drawn. Find the equation of the line of best fit in terms of F and E. Give your equation in the simplest form. And then for part B, engine size 1.1, use your equation to find the kilometers per litre he should expect to get. So part A first, straight, straight line question. We need a, two points to find the gradient, and then Y minus B equals MX minus A. Now it's not told us any points here, so we need to go up to the graph and find them ourselves. So you just look for real points on the graph. So don't pick this, that's not on the graph. Don't pick this. Don't pick this that you can't read. Look for one you can read. There's one there, and there's one there. So our first point I'm going to use is this one. And that is looking here, 3, 3.54. So it's along 3.5 and up 8. So I can take a note of that here, 3.5 and 8. And similarly, this one here I can see is 1.514. Once you get your two points, you can work out your gradient. So... Remember, gradient is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. 
So I'll call that x1 and y1 and this one x2 and y2. So we've got 14 take away on top over 1.5 minus 3.5. Now I should be expecting a negative answer here because the, the slope is sloping down away. So 14 take away 8 is 6. 1.5 minus 3.5 is minus 2, which gives me a gradient of negative 3. 6 divided by negative 2. Then we're going to use y minus b equals mx minus a. So I'll just call one of the points a and b. Let's do this one, but you can use the other one. So y minus b is mx minus a. So we've got y minus 8 equals minus 3x minus 3.5. Get a mark for getting that far, and then fixing it all up, y minus 8 equals minus 3x. Minus times a minus is a plus. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1.5 is 10.5. And then that means y equals minus 3x plus 18.5. But we need to swap our axes for f and e. So f equals minus 3e plus 18.5 for our final mark. Part b says use your equation to work out how many kilometres per litre he gets, which is f, and his engine size is 1.1. So for part b, e equals 1.1. So that means that f equals minus 3 times 1.1 plus 18.5. That equals minus 3.3 plus 18.5. And if you can't do that sum, you can just at the side do 18.5 minus 3.3 to get 2. 8 minus 3 is 5 and 1. So you get 15.2. And the units were given to us kilometers per litre kilometers per liter. And we're done there for our final mark. Choosing the subject of the formula, let's look at linear ones first, so no squares or square roots to do, just ones where you're going to have to manipulate it as a normal standard equation almost. So the first one, 2019, paper one, question seven said, the area of a trapezium is given by this formula, make x the subject of the formula. So key things we hear are, if there's brackets, you need to expand them. If there's fractions, you need to get rid of them by times and by the denominator. Doesn't matter which order you do it first, I usually get rid of fractions as fast as I can. So I'm going to times both sides of this equation by 2. So in step 1, I'm going to write 2a on the left hand side equals, well, 2 times a half is 1. So h x plus y is all that's left. And now we can expand our bracket. 2a is equal to h times x plus h times y. I have to make x the subject, so the goal is anything with x gets left on its own, so I need to move this to the left hand side. So I've got 2a minus hy equals hx, and I want x on its own, so I need to divide through by h. So 2a minus hy all divided by h equals x. Or you can write it the other way, x equals 2a minus hy all over h would be fine as well. Test 3, Mass of Mass 2019, paper 1, question 8, simultaneous equations. John bought 7 bags of cement, 3 bags of gravel, and the total weight was 215 grams. Write down an equation. So 7 bags of cement, say, plus 3 bags of gravel equals 215. Doing the same for part B, Shona bought five bags of cement and four bags of gravel, and it was 200 grams. Five bags of cement plus four bags of gravel equals 200 grams. Calculate the weight of one bag of cement and one bag of gravel. So simultaneous equations. So if I write down my equations again, I had 7C plus 3G equals 215. And I also had 5C plus 4G is equal to 200. So we need to make either the C's the same or the G's the same. I'll just make the G's the same. So if I times the top one by 4 and the bottom one by 3, 28C plus 12G equals 860. And 15C plus 12G 
equals 600. I can now just take away to get 13C equals, so the Gs disappear, 6260. So that means that C is equal to 260 divided by 13, which is 20. I now need to find my G. So subbing it in, let's just look at the top equation, 7C plus 3G, remember, was equal to 215. So that means I can do 7 times 20 plus 3G equals 215. That's 140 plus 3G is 215. So take to get 3G is equal to 75. So dividing by 3G is equal to 25. Now, you're basically done, but you need to actually then say what gravel is and what cement is just to answer the question. So the cement was equal to 20 and the units were kilograms, and the gravel is equal to 25 kilograms. And we're done there for our final mark. Square National 5 Maths 2019 Paper 1 Question 9, completing the square. The graph shows a parabola of the maximum turning point is 420. Write down the equation of the axis of symmetry. So the axis of the symmetry, remember, is this this line that goes down the middle. That, that's a vertical line, so that occurs at x equal to 4, because the coordinate is 420. So remember, the turning point tells you how to find this in completed square form. So the completed square form is the turning point. A is minus 4, because it's the opposite, to make that 0. So A equals minus 4, because minus 4 plus 4 is 0. And B is just your 20, the other number. So it's minus 4 and 20. SQA in National 5 Maths 2019, paper 1, question 10. Some vectors here. It says in triangle PQR, PR is 6 minus 4 and RQ is minus 1, 8. Express PQ in component form. So P to Q is going from here to here. If that is the same as P to R plus R to Q. So writing that out, P to Q equals P to R plus R to Q. So that equals 6 minus 4 plus minus 1, 8, which is equal to 6 minus 1 is 5, minus 4 plus 8 is 4, 5, 4 in component form. Part B, M is the midpoint of PR, express M to Q in component form. So let's find a route for M to Q. We could go from M to P to Q or M to R to Q. Let's go that way. So M to R plus R to Q. So we could say that m to q equals m to r plus r to q. Now we already know what r to q is, it's minus 1, 8, so we need to find out what m r is. But it should be obvious that m to r is a half of p to r. So we can write that down, that m to r equals a half of p to r, which equals a half of 6 minus 4. So just half in both the numbers, that's 3 minus 2. And therefore, m to q equals our 3 minus 2 plus our r to q, which is minus 1, 8, which equals 3 minus 1 is 2, minus 2 add 8 is 6. 2 to 6 is our final answer. Next grade, National 5 Maths 2019, paper 1, question 11. Pam has designed a company logo. She starts by drawing a regular pentagon. So all these five angles are the same, and these are isosceles triangles. And she reverses the diagram line as the circumference of a circle. She then adds the design shown in the diagram, which is here. AF is the diameter of the circle, and it says calculate the size of angle OFB. OFB. So this angle in here is what it wants. So first of all, we can calculate our middle angle as our first starting position for angles and shapes. That is going to be 360 divided by, there's five of them, which is 72. So we know that that's 72 degrees. So A, O, B is 72. Angles on a straight line add up to 180, so I can do 180 minus 72 to get 108, so I know that that one is 108 degrees. But you should be able to see that this is an isosceles triangle because that's a radius and that's a radius. I'll mark that here. So I can do 180 minus 108 again, I suppose, 
to get 72. 72 divided by 2 gives you 36. So we know that that's 36 degrees. And then we can just answer the question OFB equals 36 degrees. And we're done there. Next to be National 5, Mass 2019, Paper 1, Question 12. Express root 2 over root 40 as a fraction with a rational denominator and give it in its simplest form. So we've got root 2 over root 40. You can simplify now or after. So we'll simplify after root 40 over root 40. That gives me 2 times 40 is 80. So root 80 on the top. And root 40 times root 40 is just 40. So simplifying our root 80. And we've got two numbers at times to make 80. One's a square number, the biggest you can find. 16 goes into it five times. So that is 4 root 5. So our final answer is 4 root 5 over 40. 4 goes into 40 10 times. So that's root 5 over 10. And we're done there. Next screen, that's 5 maths 2019, paper 1, question 13. Had this part of the graph 3 cos x plus 45 is shown. The graph has a minimum turning point A. What's the coordinates? So, if I kind of annotate on top of this, our normal cross graph, I'll put it at the side, goes like this. And it goes between 1 and minus 1, and this number here is usually 180. So that, co that turning point is related to this turning point. It's usually along 180 and down minus 1. But this has been shifted to the left by 45 degrees. So 180 minus 45 will give me my first number, which is 135. And instead of it being minus 1, well, the amplitude is 3, so it's going to be minus 3 for our second mark. That's the 5 maths 2019, paper 1, question 14. Solve this equation. So again, the lowest common multiple between 2 and 5 is 10. So if I times everything by 10, I'll be good to go. So I've got 10 times x over 2 minus 10 times 1 equals 10 times 3 minus x over 5. Simplifying our fractions, we get 10 over 2 is 5, so that gives me 5x minus 10 equals 10 over 5 is 2. And now we can solve the equation as normal. 5x minus 10 is 6 minus 2x. Taking the x's over to the left, adding 2x gives us 7x minus 10 equals 6. So 7x equals 16. And therefore, final answer is x equals 16 over 7. Check that it's simplified. It is. So I'm done. Mr. Clare here for Clare Maths. This one was from 2019 Paper 1 National 5 Maths. And it was asking a question about a ball getting kicked off a cliff. And it asked us when will the ball hit the sea? A strange one, that one. So let's have a look at this one and see how we solve that one. Again, it's an unfamiliar context, so that is what makes it difficult. So here's a picture of the actual question. It says a ball is kicked from a cliff top, and its height is given by this equation. H is 12t minus 5t squared. But uh, calculate the height of the ball above the cliff top after two seconds. Have a look and see if you can solve that. Then part B continued. The graph below represents the height of the ball relative to the cliff top after two seconds. It says the sea is 70 metres above the cliff top. After how many seconds will the ball hit the sea? Have a look, see if you can solve that. Okay, the solution to the first problem. Calculate the height of the ball after two seconds. Well, we've got an equation. The height is 12t minus 5t squared. And they want t equal to 2 because it's two seconds. So it's just a substitution question in an unfamiliar context. So the height would be 12 times 2 minus 5 times 2 squared. That's 24 minus 4 fives is 20. So that gives me an answer of 4 metres for one mark there. Okay, part B. This gives us the graph relative to the cliff top after T seconds. We see is 70 metres below. After how many seconds will the ball hit the sea? Well, just remember our equation for the height was equal to 12t minus 5t squared. But we know that this must equal minus 17 because it's going down by 17 from the start. 
So that means we just need to say that that equaled 17 minus 17 for one mark. And that's difficult to see if you're not sure of the context of the question. Part two then says once we've got our equation, we just need to solve that equation in a normal way. So this is a quadratic. So if I move everything to the right hand side, I'll get zero on this side. I'll get 5t squared minus 12t minus 17, or in the more familiar way, 5t squared minus 12t minus 17 equals zero. So that's a quadratic that we can now solve. There are two main ways to solve a quadratic. We can use the quadratic formula or we can factorise. Now, since this is a non-calculator paper, chances are that this will factorise. I'm going to show you my method of factorising at this point, see how we can follow along. So what I do, if I use a different coloured pen, if I times 5 and 17 together, 5 times 17, well, that equals 5 sevens is 35, 5 ones is 5, so that means 85. I'm looking for factors of 85, okay? There's not many options, but we need to add or take away to make 12. So let me start listing them in order. I've got 1 and 85. Well, they don't add or take away to make 12, the middle number. 2 clearly doesn't go into it. 3 doesn't go into it. 4 doesn't go into it. The next one that goes into it is 5, because it ends in 5. 5 and 8 goes 1. 3 left over. 5 sevens is 35. Now, if you look and stop here for a moment, you should realise that 5 and 17 times together in to make the 85 that I've just found out, but the add or take away to make minus 12. So remember, now we're just trying to make minus 12. So to make minus 12 is our key number, that equals minus 17 plus five. So if we draw a box at this point, we have got 5t squared, and then we're splitting up our middle term into minus 17t, plus 5t, that gives us my minus 12t, and then at the end, I've still got my minus 17. So now we can just factorise each line in column. So factorising this, 5t squared and minus 17t, the only common factor is t. But going up and down the way, the common factor between 5t squared and 5t is clearly 5t. Now it's like a Sudoku puzzle, t times minus 17 is minus 17t, so it's minus 17. And 5t times 1 is 5t, so it's plus 1. My factors have dropped out. So in the end, after all that work or any method you prefer for factorising, you get 5t minus 17, and you get t plus 1, and that equals 0. And if you can get to that part, you can get a mark there. First, the final thing to do is to solve that and work out your t's. So for the first one, you've got, from this one, you've got 5t minus 17 equals 0. That means that t must be 17 over 5 seconds. And then the other one, you've got t plus 1 equals 0, so t must be minus 1 seconds. But time is positive. So t minus, minus 1 is invalid. So there is our final solution. 17 over 5 seconds is the one we're selecting as our final answer.